Hello, this is Cameron, and welcome to another video by The Lab Maniacs. As always, we have all deck lists from this video listed in the description below, as well as our social media info. Thank you for watching, and enjoy the show. Hi, Dan here from the Laboratory Maniacs, and today we are bringing you another deck tack. I am joined by Siggy, and we're going to be talking about the Doomsday Zur list. Yes, a uh, very cool deck, originated by Skuloth, who uh, also very graciously provided us with some good insight about the most recent iteration of his deck, and... I'll be bringing you some of the stuff he said, some of the stuff I think about the decklist, and so on. So we may have already given it away, but Siggy, who is your commander, and what do they do? So my commander is Zer the Enchanter. He is a 4 mana, 1 generic, and 1 of each in Esper colors, 1 for human wizard, who can also fly. And whenever Zer the Enchanter attacks, you can search your library for, a, uh, for an enchantment with CMC 3 or less, put it onto the battlefield, and then shuffle your library. That seems like a pretty powerful effect. Is that something that your deck actively seeks to do? Not at all, no. Hmm. We are not doing well if we actually have to play our commander. If that's true, then how do you usually win? So, this deck wins by having a Laboratory Maniac on the field while not having any cards in our library and drawing a card. Interesting. So, what happens if something like a Praetor's Grasp exiles your Laboratory Maniac? Do you have other outs? See, Praetor's Grasp specifically is a bit of a problem because uh, it exiles face down. We do have one card that interacts with cards that are similar to Praetor's Grasp, which is Pull from Eternity, an instant speed card with uh, a cost of one white mana that will basically let us put target face up exiled card into our graveyard. Now, Praetor's Grasp, as we uh, all know, does really well against this card because it exiles face down. But, yeah, any other card works perfectly well against that, because we can put it into our graveyard, and from there we can put it into our Doomsday pile. So you mentioned Doomsday. Is that the best thing that you're usually trying to do? Hmm, it depends. So, when I'm directly going for the win, Doomsday will probably be involved in some way. But, there are some other good ways that I can get to Doomsday. The first and foremost one is probably Ad Nauseam, which is just an all-around all-star in a lot of competitive EDH decks, and probably for a reason. Now, since we are in Esper Colors, we can also run Angel's Grace, which makes Ad Nauseam even better, since it basically lets us draw our whole deck. That's usually a pretty good thing to be able to do. Yeah. On top of that, we run a lot of tutor spells that can find us either at nauseum or just Doomsday directly. And if things are going really poorly, we can also just cast Zer, swing with him, find a Necropotence, draw like 30 cards, and win next turn. I'm glad Zer yeah. at least gets to pretend he's a very useful card in your deck. So how do you protect yourself from opposing decks? What do you do to interact with them and be able to execute your game plan or prevent them from getting to theirs? Since we do get to play blue in this deck, our main way of interaction is through counter spells, And we run a lot of them. All the good ones in the format. Outside of that, we also run... A few specific things, for example, Chain of Vapor or Cyclonic Rift. The former is especially good because it can also serve as a ramp spell. But if you need to bounce something, then you can do that. 
Furthermore, um, hate bears and similar painful creatures are fairly popular in competitive EDH. So we also run some creature interaction in the form of Swords to Plowshares and Toxic Deluge. To round it all off, if we need to protect ourselves from some sort of graveyard strategy or an opposing Yogmoth's will, we can use our Tormod script to exile somebody's graveyard. Very interesting. I'm, it's kind of cool to see just how many different angles you can interact on, even if you can't necessarily interact super redundantly on most of those besides the stack. So, Doomsday Zer is often referred to as one of the best decks in the competitive EDH format. What do you think this deck does better than a lot of other similar decks? Now, this deck usually gets compared to other let's say, storm and fast combo type, uh, type decks. And the thing Zer does a lot better than most of them is that it has a lot more game against stacks. Simply because you've got, on top of all the interaction I just mentioned, some removal for their pieces in your command zone. I said before that we only really want to play Zer when we're having a bad time, but... He is amazing when we play him at that point, because if we can swing with Zer while our opponent has something like a Rule of Law effect out, we can grab an Oblivion Ring or a Grasp of Fate to quite comfortably deal with that. That seems very effective. So, as a commander, he really does bring quite a bit to the table in terms of your backup plans. I'd say so. So what weaknesses does this deck have? There's one very big weakness, and that's Sphere Effects. Because we kind of want to be able to not only cast our setup spells for cheap, so our tutors, our ramp spells, and so on, Doomsday itself is also just a huge pain if we have to play through a Sphere Effect. Because what we usually try to do is we... Sacrifice Lion's Eye Diamond to make exactly three mana, which will at some point let us cast Yorg Will or Laboratory Maniac. And if there's a Sphere Effect out, we can't Gush for free, we can't get Taxian Probe for free, we can't Lion's Eye Diamond for free, and we can't even get Yorg Will and Labman. It's terrible, honestly. Yeah, that does sound pretty unfortunate. Oh, uh, let's talk about your standard run of the mill Doomsday Pile real quick. This is also commonly known as the Gush Pile, and it is stacked as follows from top to bottom. Gush, Lion's Eye Diamond, Getaxian Probe, Yogmoth's Will, and Laboratory Maniac. Now, the nice part about this pile is that it's basically free. All it requires you to have is 4 life and 4 islands in play. Or 3 islands if you haven't made your land drop yet. So there are a couple of things you need to pay attention to when resolving this pile, which is why I'm going to walk you through it now. The first thing you do is you cast your cantrip to draw into Gush. After that, you cast Gush for free by returning two islands, drawing you into Lion's Eye Diamond and Getaxian Probe. You cast your Lion's Eye Diamond, you cast your Getaxian Probe, and here is the important part. When you cast your probe, you retain priority to crack your Lion's Eye Diamond for triple black. Then you discard your hand and you draw your Yorgmoth's Will, and you'll use the triple black you got from LED to cast Yorg Will. Once Yorg Will is active, you cast LED from the graveyard and make triple blue with it. After that, you cast Getaxian Probe to draw into Laboratory Maniac. You cast Laboratory Maniac with your triple blue. And finally, you cast Gush by returning two more islands to win the game. So, let's talk about some different sample hands that this deck could reasonably see in a game. Okay, so today I've brought three different hands. A wonderful, wonderful hand, a terrible, terrible hand, and 
one that I'd really have to think about. So, the first hand I've brought is basically a dream come true. It consists of Underground Sea, Tundra, Dark Ritual, Mana Crypt, Force of Will, Snap Custom Mage, and Ad Nauseam. What makes this hand so good is that we can cast a turn 1 Ad Nauseam with Force of Will backup. Yeah, that seems really good. And you even would have something like a second island for your turn 2 to power some kind of a gush pile. Yeah, definitely. This hand is quite literally just the dream. That does seem incredibly powerful. So what kind of hand are we looking at that would just immediately go back into your deck? I've got one for you here. So we're looking at Island, Island, Scalding Tarn, Hollowed Fountain, Thirst for Knowledge, Oblivion Ring, and Tormod's Crypt. Now, it's nice to have all islands as your lands, but four is far too much for your usual hand to want to keep. On top of that, while we do have a card draw spell in the form of Thirst for Knowledge, this hand has zero acceleration, and two pieces of interaction that might not even end up mattering. We'd rather just see like a counter spell or two here instead, and like a Sol Ring or a Mana Crypt or something similar. Yeah, I can see why you wouldn't want something like your Oblivion Ring in your hand, and no acceleration is just going to kill you in this format. Mm-hmm. So what's a hand that you would have to think about? That's this one. So here we have an Island, a Basic Swamp, a Windswept Heath, Negate, Sol Ring, Grasp of Fate, and Ad Nauseam. Now, this hand looks quite good on paper, because we've got mana acceleration, we've got an ad nauseum in our opening hand, and we've got interaction in the form of negate and grasp of fate. Now, with grasp of fate, we have a problem that's similar to oblivion ring, partially even worse because it's harder to cast because of double white. And there's another big issue here. So... If we actually wanted to go for an early ad nauseum with this, uh, with just this hand, we would have to crack our windswept teeth for a scrub land, which would take <clears throat> us off blue mana, which we of course desperately need if we want to be able to go off. Yeah, that seems like it's pulling you in a lot of different directions, some of which you really don't want to go down. Yep. Not I'm not going to lie. All. In the very few games that I've played, Zer, I have never, ever, ever fetched a Scrubland. Yeah, I think neither have I. I mean, High Tide is a thing in this deck, and if you're able to, you really want to be able to get High Tide going. That makes sense. So, these are some definitely interesting hands. Thank you, Siggy for your expertise in this deck. Thank you for School Off for providing us with some information to talk about. And thank you all for watching. This was another Laboratory Maniacs Deck Tech. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.